In this demonstration, we're going to look at the high availability functionality of Exchange Server 2013. So what we're going to do to start with is we're going to pre-stage the cluster network object for the database availability group. We then create a new database availability group. We're then going to add some members to a database availability group. And then we're going to add a mailbox database copy. So the first thing to do here, like we said, is to actually pre-stage the cluster network object. So I'm on my Active Directory domain controller. And what I'm going to do here is just go into Active Directory users and computers. So I'll come in through Server Manager. And through Server Manager, I'll just come to my tools and then go to my Active Directory users and computers. Right now I'm in here, I'm just going to come up my view up at the top here, and I'm just going to go down to my advanced features. Next thing to do here is just come to my uh, Active Directory domain, and then what I'm going to do is go to computers, and then within computers, I'm going to create a new computer. That's what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to create this computer object for my database availability group. That's what I'm going to call it DAG1. I'll just click OK. Next thing to do once I've got this up and running is I just need to set some permissions up. So all I'm going to do here is just right click on DAG1, go to the properties, and then I'm going to click on my security tab. Right, the first thing I'm going to add here is my Exchange Trusted Subsystem. So all we're going to do here is we're just going to click Add. So Exchange Trusted Subsystem, and click OK. And I'm going to add some permissions for my computer. So I'll just select Add here, go to my Object Types, and this time I want computers in here. So we'll click OK. And then what we'll do here is we'll just type in the name of the Exchange server. So we'll just add LON MBX1, just click OK. And we'll just highlight this machine here. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to give this um, machine full control permissions. So we'll add full control permissions. And then all we'll do here is we'll just click OK. And what we'll also do as well is just give full control permissions as well to our Exchange Trusted Object. Uh, the final thing I'm just going to do at this point here is just disable this account. Say so yes to that, and we'll click OK. Now what we'll do is we'll actually set up our database availability group. So what I'm going to do here is just change over to my uh, lon-cas1, which is my client access server, and access the Exchange Admin panel. So here I'm in the Exchange Control Panel, or Exchange Admin Center, whatever you want to call it. And what we'll do now is we'll just come down to Servers, and under Servers we'll go for our database availability groups. And what we want to do here is create a new database availability group. So all we'll do here is select the new icon. And then what we'll do is we'll fill out the little table. So I've done here, I'm going to call it DAG1. Witness server will be lon-cas1. C colon backslash FSW DAG1 will be the witness directory for the quorum. And then we've entered the IP address of 172.16.0.33. So the next thing to do here is just select save. So we now have DAG1 up and running. Right, the next thing to do here is to add some servers to this DAG. So all we're going to do here is we're going to click on the little icon here, which will allow us to manage our DAG membership. Then what we need to do is we need to add our servers. So what we'll do here is we'll click our plus. And what we'll do here is we'll add LON MBX1. And we'll also add LON MBX2. And then we'll select OK. And then we'll save this off. Right, this is going to run through here. Now this will just take a little while, so we won't sit and watch the green bar move across the screen. We'll pause it and return back once the operation is complete. So our servers are now added to our database availability group. Next thing to do here is to actually set up one of our databases to be highly available across our database availability group. So we'll just close down the screen here. And the next thing to do here is to just add in these databases. So what we'll do here, just come to databases, we'll go for mailbox database one, and then what we'll do with mailbox database one, we'll just come to our more button here, we'll add a database copy, and then what we'll do is we'll specify that we're going to add this copy to our second server, and select OK. What we can also do here is just click on a more options button here. And one of the things we can also do here as well under the more options is we've got the ability to uh, specify a replay lag time in days, minutes, uh, hours, seconds. 
and the purpose of this is really to allow us to have multiple copies of the database but if one copy of the database corrupts so do all the others so what we can do here is by putting in a replay lag time we can actually keep one of the databases behind all of the other copies I'm not going to bother at this point here I can also postpone seeding as well so I can uh, put this off for a little bit I'm not going to bother either and I'll just select the save button Right, so as we can see now it's now saving this off it's now going to add a copy of mailbox database one from lon mbx1 to lon mbx2 now this will take a little while so all i'll do at this point here is just pause the video and return back once we're complete and what we can now see is that saving is complete so we'll select close at this point here and what we can see if i just pull this across a little bit we can now see the servers with copies are lon mbx1 and lon mbx2 that's the end of this demonstration of creating a database availability group. Thank you.